let's give him all the praise. Let's give him all the adoration. Lift up your voice. Celebrate the Father this moment. Lift up your voice. Give him praise. Lift up your voice. Celebrate him this hour. Lift up your voice this hour and magnify his name. Father, we magnify you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you all the adoration. Thank you, Father, for you are the one that gives the word, but many are the company of them that publish it. Lord, send your word again in this service. Let your word come expressly. Let every heart be blessed. Let everybody be healed. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, send me your word this hour. Your word of healing. Your word of transformation. Your word that will cause me to walk in the supernatural. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Please, you may be seated. I appreciate God's servant again this moment for the privilege he has granted me again to bring God's word to us this day. And I trust God that that same grace of this commission he enjoyed in the first and the second service shall flow through me also in this service in the mighty name of Jesus. Ever since the month began, we have been looking at vital keys to unlocking the supernatural. Vital keys to unlocking the supernatural. Understand that for every door, there is a key. For every door, there is a key. Until you locate the right key, the door may never be open. Remembering a story of God's servant, he said when he was young, the apostle over this commission, he said a day came that the grandmother he was living with went to the market while he was inside the room sleeping. And when he woke up, the door was locked, so there was no access to go out. He cried and cried and cried and cried, cried, could not open the door. So stop crying and locate the key. He cried. And he got tired, he slept again. <laughs> because there was no key to open the door. Until you locate the right key, struggle continues. The only thing that terminates struggle in life is the right key. And Jesus called it the key of knowledge. The key of knowledge. If we must operate in the supernatural, we must have the key of knowledge. Luke chapter 11 and verse 52, Jesus said, these ones will not go in and they will not allow others to come in. He said, they have hold back the key of knowledge. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Just like in the secular world, there is this common saying that knowledge is power. A man of knowledge is a man of authority. A man of knowledge is a man of power. The difference between Coca-Cola and, and Pepsi is knowledge. There is a knowledge that the Coca-Cola company has that Pepsi company does not have. And it has been hidden for long. <laughs> knowledge. If you locate knowledge, if you have the key of knowledge, then operating in the supernatural is cheap. Get this clear. Everyone born of God is born into the supernatural, but not everyone born of God is operating in the supernatural. Even though you are born there, if you don't know how to live there, you can manifest there. So I must know what it takes 
to operate in my new realm. To operate in my new family. To operate where I now belong. Everyone that is born of God carries the seed of the supernatural in him. He carries divine nature. He has the nature of God. Say, thanks be to God who causes us to triumph. But how do we triumph in victory? By knowledge. He said, he has made us meet to be partakers of his divine nature. You are a partaker of his divine nature, but you take knowledge to operate there. Knowledge is key. But understand that the foundation for operating in the supernatural, as we have been told, is salvation. If you are not saved, you have no access there. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. John chapter 3 and verse 6. His spirit. But you must be conscious of your new status. And we operate also in that realm by faith. We'll look into details shortly. And also by our undying commitment to serving God. That means everyone born of God is to serve God. So what are the vital keys quickly? Number one vital key is having the interest of God in your heart. The interest of God and his kingdom. And what is the interest of God and the interest of God and his kingdom in your heart? His service. We must have the interest of God and his kingdom in our heart. Anyone that has the interest of God and his kingdom in his heart provokes himself to walk in that realm. So I must serve the interest of God's kingdom. I must serve God and his interest. Matthew chapter number 6 verse 33 very clear. It says seek ye for the kingdom of God. That is the interest of his kingdom. And what is God's interest? Souls. Number one interest of God is souls. I never saw anywhere in the Bible that they said when somebody was healed, the angels celebrate in heaven. I never saw where they said when somebody bought a new car, there was joy in heaven. I never saw where they said somebody built a mansion and there was joy in heaven. Nowhere. All those things are earthly. But I saw from the Bible that there is joy in heaven for every soul that is saved. That is God's heartbeat. No wonder God himself speaking in 1 Timothy chapter number 2, verse 4. He said, I wish that all men be saved. What is my own heartbeat? That all men be saved. Please, I said 1 Timothy chapter 2. Just like God's servant said in the first service, please be spiritual. Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? Who will have all men to be saved? God wants all men to be saved. His heart beats every hour is for men to be saved. So if you align yourself to the heartbeat of God, then you begin to operate like God operates. So you must align yourself to God's heartbeat. God's heartbeat is souls. Don't allow any single day to go by without having souls in mind. If you have God's interest in mind, you will pray for souls. If you have God's interest in mind, you will pray for the growth of his church. If you have God's interest in, his, in your mind, you will pray for effective word ministration in every service. If you have God's interest in your heart, you will pray for miracle signs and wonders in every service. You will focus on his kingdom if you have his interest. God's heartbeat, it sows. Can you look at your neighbor and say, key into God's heartbeat and win souls.
Now my next key is the key of faith. The key of faith. Why? Because we secure the hand of God that provokes supernatural by faith. When your faith comes alive, you commit him to act. Say, so who had believed our report? Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. To whom shall the hand of God be revealed? Believing. Faith is key to operating in the supernatural. My faith must come alive. But my faith can never come alive without me knowing. That is where knowledge comes to play. The little time I've spent with the epistle, I discovered that the apostle never pray for anything special for the people outside knowledge. All their prayer was prayer of knowledge. Prayer of knowledge. Prayer of knowledge. Prayer of knowledge. Praying for knowledge. Colossians chapter number 1. Reading from verse 5. I think let's take it from there. Go back to verse 4 please. I think it will be better. Let's take it from there so it will be better. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. Next verse. For the hope which is led up for you in heaven. Wherefore ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Which is come unto you as it is in all the world. And bringing forth fruit. As it doth also in you. Since the day we heard of it and knew the grace of God is truth. Next verse. As ye also learn of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. Next verse. Who also declare unto you your love in the spirit. Now, they were, he was simply telling them about their conversion, their salvation. Now, look at what he now said. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you. What was the prayer? And to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge. What was the prayer? The prayer of knowledge. Knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Praying for knowledge. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge. The prayer was knowledge prayer. Not God give them car. No. When you have knowledge, you take the car. When you have knowledge, you take the healing. When you have knowledge, you take your wife. He didn't pray for wife. No. His focus was knowledge. Christ has done this. Understand what Christ has done and walk in it. That was Paul's prayer. Everywhere you see Paul pray was knowledge prayer. Lord, give them this knowledge. Lord, grant them this knowledge. Let them know. So, a man of knowledge is a man of faith. When you know what is yours, you don't struggle to believe it's yours. Knowledge. The new creation man is a man of knowledge. That means you operate in the supernatural based on the knowledge that you have. If you have limited knowledge, you will operate according to where you are. It is knowledge based. So my faith in God is based on what I know of God. Maybe you didn't get it. My faith is based on what I know of God. How much of God I know determines how much of faith I manifest. 
faith. So operating in the supernatural has to do with faith. So you must develop your faith by knowledge. The reason why a little thing happened around you and you are jumping and looking for prayer up and down is because you lack knowledge. Check any believer that is jumping from one place to the other looking for prayer. It's a, it's a knowledge problem he has. I can never forget the words I had God's servant shared a few weeks ago. I can't, it, the thing rings in my heart almost every day. He said, God forgives sin, but he does not forgive ignorance. He, he, there is no way. Because it is according to your knowledge. God cannot help you beyond your knowledge. No. He can't. It is your knowledge that determines your take in this kingdom. Your knowledge determines your take. Because knowledge provokes faith. It provokes faith. So you need knowledge. Mark chapter number 9, verse 23. Mark 9, 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. All things. They are possible to the one that believe. But my belief is determined by my knowledge. Sir, so you can't know God and doubt God. No, you can't know God and doubt him. Now let's take for example, Wiki is privileged to be the governor of River State. If you come in contact with Wiki and Wiki give you a written note to any company for employment, before you get there, you have seen yourself employed. Why? You later have not even gotten to the company, but you have assumed you are employed. Why? Because you believe he's the number one in the state. And every instruction given, nobody can turn it down. As far as River State is concerned. Your faith is so much built in the governor. He's not even going by himself. Oh, he only gave you a written note. Maybe put his seal there. You're already carrying it here. Ah, man, I got my job now. You have not, they have not even said this. You just know that there's employment for you. That is what knowledge does. When you know God, when you understand God, when whatever he says in his word, you don't question it. You just believe it. But my next key to operate in the supernatural is that your mindset must conform to who you are. Your mindset must conform. That is, it must agree with your new status. It must agree with who you now are. Who am I? I am seated together with Christ. So my mindset must agree. It must conform. I must agree that I am seated now together with Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. Say he has raised us up together with him. I made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Please, look away from your environment. Look away from your surroundings. See yourself in Christ. We heard what God's servant told us about the bishop. That they traveled as they were about to learn there was this wild wind. Perhaps there was fear. With the, the team that went with him. But he was relaxed. He was calm. He understood the forces at work in him. He understood that the one that sits together with Christ cannot crash. He knew that. I can't sit together with Christ. Or I can't be in Christ and die before my time. It's not possible. It's a mindset. He has already, he knows that. You can't deceive him about that. Not even the wind. We saw it. We saw Jesus in Mark chapter 4. Traveling with his disciples. And the storm arose. The Bible told us that he was sleeping. 
He was just enjoying himself. Jesus just relaxed. So when the disciples came, carry us down that we perish. He just woke up. He said, ah, what is your problem? Okay, let me just show you who I am. Now, peace be still. you. He now turned to them, all ye men of little faith. He just manifested his true self. So what do you do? Get this clear. You can't manifest your true self when you don't know who you are. The challenge of the church is not who they are. The challenge of the church is knowing who they are. In God's agenda, you can't be sick. In God's agenda, health is yours. But you need to come to that realm to understand that I can never be sick. Just like God's servant said in the first and second service, he said, you express your belief by what you say. Each time I hear God's servant say, I won't die up till 120. He's just only telling you how long he will live. I can't die. 120 is guaranteed. I cannot be sick. There are certain meetings I've seen him. He's ministering. <coughs> but he's still telling you nothing. I'm very strong. I'm healthy. He does not believe that he can be sick. This is a mindset. It's a mentality, sir. If you don't have it, struggle will continue. So what do I do? I see it with God's word. I feed on God's word. I see myself from God's word. And I live by the word. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3 and verse 18. He said, we all with open face, beholding us in the glass, are being changed. So, the more you look, the more you become. You have become it, yes, in the spirit, but in the physical, the more you look, the more you become. You are only taking what you are in the spirit to manifest on the earth by having the knowledge. James chapter 1. Look at how James put it. I think let's read from verse 22 for better understanding. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Verse 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgeted what manner of man he is. So if you are not doing what the word has said you are, you are forgotten your true self. You are forgotten. You don't know who you are. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, which is the word of God, and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. This man shall be blessed in his deed. This man shall be blessed. The one that keep looking. The one that keep looking. Not just looking, but acting on what he has seen. So who am I in Christ? I live in health. Who am I in Christ? I can never be sick. Your mindset must agree. So what do I do? Go for the word. Go for the relevant knowledge. Quickly. Today is our special healing service. Let's look at few assumptions that we must get rid to secure our healing. Few assumptions that we must get rid from our minds so we can secure our healings. These assumptions will never help you or will never allow you to stay in health or be healed. Number one assumption. God will heal me if he wants to. God will heal me if he wants to. That means he has shifted responsibility to God. God's servant Bishop Eruko said, any faith 
that releases all responsibility to God is an irresponsible faith. God will heal me if he wants to know. In God's agenda, you are healed. Not that he wants to. The new creation man is not the one looking for healing. It's the one that is healed. That's the new creation man. How do I know? First Peter chapter number 2 and verse 24. The new creation man is not looking for healing. He's healed. Who himself, sorry, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are what? We wear. That means you are not sick. Sickness has been fixed. That means your new status is health. We were healed. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. That one, why he said we are healed was because it was a prophecy of what was to happen. It has not yet happened. So Isaiah said we are. But when Peter came, Peter said no. We were. When was, when did that, when was it taking place? Or when did it take place? It took place on the cross. Jesus fixed sickness there. That was why in the, the, the gospel, let's, let me take it away. From the gospel, people call for healing. Why? Because Jesus had not yet died for sickness. No wonder the man came in Mark chapter 1 verse 40. He said, will thou heal me? Jesus said, I will. He was talking because healing was not available by that time. Jesus was still very much around. But after his death, his burial, and resurrection, now health was made available. To the believer, health is yours. You are not looking for, for healing. No. But it is the ignorance of the believer that makes him seek for healing. So even though when he seeks for it, God is still faithful to heal. But the one of knowledge is not supposed to be sick. Number two assumption. God will heal me when he chooses to. God will heal me when he chooses to know he has finished with you. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. It said he has blessed us with all. Including, heal, including health. He has blessed us with all the blessings. Including health. So not when he chooses to. He has chosen to heal you in Christ. He chose to heal you in Christ. So in Christ you are healed. In Christ health is yours. Number three assumption. God disciplined his children with sickness. Wrong assumption. God does not discipline with sickness. Why? He said every good and every perfect gift comes from where? From above. So does sickness come from above? Then why do you say he's the one? It's a wrong assumption. God does not discipline with sickness. Some always use um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. That Paul said, um, um, how did he put it? That um, he perfect me and all that. No. What Paul was simply saying there was his suffering for the gospel, not sickness. Never sickness. If God gives people sickness, why does he heal it? That means you not heal. We saw in the ministry of Jesus because Jesus is God in a man. Jesus, God in a man on the earth. He healed every sickness he came in contact with. Everyone. Everyone that heard of him was running in to be healed. Everyone. 
Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good. What was the good he was doing? Healing. Healing all. All, not some. All. All. Sir, don't allow the devil tell you that it is God. I, will, I did a little study on 1 Samuel, chapter number 16. And I discovered that God was not the one that sent an evil spirit upon Saul. No. Verse 16, please. He said, Let our Lord now command thy servant which are before thee to seek out a man who is a corny player on an harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, that thou shall be well. Can God put an evil spirit in you and still be the one to take it away from you? Get this clear. In the Old Testament, the one behind sickness was not revealed. So, whether it is good, whether it is bad, it was given to God. They say it was God. That was the Old Testament. Because the revelation was not there. But when Jesus came, he said, I have come that ye may have life. Now, that's in play. Look at verse 23. I want you to get this. Look at verse 23. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand, so that Saul was refreshed and was well. And the evil spirit from, and the evil spirit departed from him. Think, pause and think. God afflicted him. Then David played. The God that afflicted him took it. Think. It was never God. It was a devil. Why did the devil, devil has access to him? Because he disobeyed God. So God, what God does was to re, 